My guest today is Mary Grigleski. Mary, how are you? Good. How are you, David? Uh, really good uh, to see you. Finally, definitely. we get to see each other here on Technology <laughs> and Friends. <laughs> so I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I know. Thank we, you. We both live in the Chicago area, but we hardly yeah. ever see each other. That's what, right. Uh, tell me, what do you do, Mary? Okay. Well, I'm a developer advocate currently at Datastax. So that's a database um, company, right, for, for uh, what you call database management company. But is off, we offer things on the cloud, like database as a service and big data. So uh, Cassandra, essentially, is very open source oriented, Cassandra, uh, Apache projects. And I'm actually specifically on the streaming product. So that's Apache Pulsar that I'm currently working on. So I'm called like a streaming developer advocate, but I work oh. to a bit now with Cassandra. Yeah, oh. so yeah. So it's exciting. it's exciting. Yeah, event-driven messaging, that's kind of my cup of tea. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Apache Pulsar. I, sure. I was unfamiliar with it until you talked about it the other day. What is it? Sure. Okay, so Apache Pulsar is kind of a, uh, in a sense, right, if we describe it in a few words, it would be a unified messaging platform that offers, like, event-driven uh, messaging. And it's it can do both, like, pops up streaming and also message queuing at the same time and in addition it does all the tr message transformation and processing and stream processing all those things so it's a pretty capable messaging uh, systems it's event driven as such um, yeah so and uh, yeah so it was originally developed uh, by Yahoo back uh, hmm. I think 2015 something like that 2014 yeah. Yahoo they, is still around exactly so they were doing all of the Yahoo finance and right. Yahoo mail all of these capabilities so they found that they needed a more robust systems to handle all the big huge amounts of data the cluster uh, on the cloud so they're kind of early adopters of all of the cloud stuff before most of the other parts of the world are doing it so so then they uh, people you know engineering teams they designed this uh, a, a pulsar then they eventually uh, donated it to apache software foundation in 2016 then okay. 2018 that's when it became a top level uh, project so yeah so it has been then pulsar has been operating i think since 2018 it's an open source uh, project on in the apache software foundation so Got yeah, it. so in a nutshell, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned it does a lot of things. It does message queuing and pub sub. It transforms messages. What What yeah. are some of the use cases that people are using Pulsar yeah, for? Sure. So I would think right. One thing um, is interesting too. I think uh, you know. I I would say right. If if you are like a database person, maybe you're familiar with this pattern called change data capture. Um, CDC pattern, right, for capturing changes of data as it enters into the database, right, there are changes that occur. So you want to be able to capture it and determine their changes and then capture it, then eventually kind of transform and then essentially trigger some actions to be to be done to these uh, captured data. So okay. I think, yeah, you can kind of think of it like that. And then Apache Pulsar can be made uh, to help with implementing this CDC pattern too because of of it being like a pops up system you can actually listen for any changes in the data in the data mm. and all your rows and stuff and then you capture the data changes and essentially to creating data pipelines so these are very typical in event driven type of systems event streaming all these streams right you want to be able to build it so then there are different parts of your stream up in the pipeline and then you transform the data, and then you eventually deposit your data to a sync. It's called a sync, right? A okay. sync is like receiving the, the transformed data like okay. that. So so I think in, in a way, too, you can say, well, from a database, I'm capturing the changes. I want to be able to deposit into an Elasticsearch sync, for example. So, yeah, so there are like connectors that you can actually connect to Elasticsearch uh, engine or like, other type of connectors too. So even like back to the same database too, you can do that as well. So yeah. I see. So if I, the scenario you just described, I'm thinking of, let's say somebody inserts a row into a database, maybe a new order comes in, it gets uh, yeah. inserted into the, uh, uh, the my Oracle database. Uh, That's then, right. Then Pulsar could be listening to that and says, oh, there's yeah. a new order. Let me, it's a That's new right. row inserted into the orders table. Let me grab that row, yeah. transform it in some way, 
and yeah. then do something with it, do send something. it to a sink. And that sink might be, like you said, yeah. a search, and it could be an odor fulfillment system, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can, can be anything that, that's ready to receive the, the change data. So, yeah. So essentially, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what it does. And it can be done very easily, right? It, it, the nice thing about pops up systems, too, is that it allows for really high volumes of data for the scalability mm -hmm. side of things, as you know, right? And you can have a broker be handling all the messages that are published, right? Pops up system, you're like listening for all the changes and receiving, you know, messages that's been produced by the publisher. And then you just disseminate to those who are interested, the consumer side, just subscribe to the messaging. So you can see too, you can have one, one to many, many to many, all these scenario. It can scale up really easily too. So scalability is really good. So yeah, it is, it's very fast. Yeah, so fast. Uh, it's one of the advantages of any kind of asynchronous application is that you don't have yeah. to wait. You That's can just kind true. of throw these messages over the wall, over the wall. And, yeah. and, and go on with your business while it takes care of, the next system right. takes care of picking it up. That's right. Um, you mentioned connectors. What are some of the connectors that are available? Okay, so the connectors, as I mentioned, right, you can have, um, as I mentioned, right, an elastic search is, is one type of connector. You can connect to other databases, maybe like MongoDB or connecting to other things. Oh, <laughs> now I'm kind of, think of thinking of it. Um, give me some, uh, you know, like Kafka, right? You can actually also kind of connect to and Kafka as well. Mm -hmm. There are also connectors for Kafka. Maybe, send, maybe something to send an email out for example. Email, a, yeah, a that, that, that's right too. Yeah, yeah, kind of essentially anything that can, you know, kind of receive data, you can, you know, there, there's any integration you can connect with it too. So, yeah, so it's, it's really, I, I feel that in the modern day of all of these, you know, heavy set of data processing, everything, you know, using an event-driven approach is definitely the way to go because you can easily, kind of like Lego pieces, you can kind of, you know, different disparate pieces, they are all independently operating, but you can hook them up. There are different connectors, you can hook them up easily. I um, mean, provided too, yeah, we have capability of hooking them up so they can all talk to each other. But anyway, um, I, I'm kind of excited too. I really like <laughs> event-driven kind of systems and because it's just fun to be able to connect and then able to connect with different types of system, different kind of messaging types and things like that, then they can all talk to one another. But yeah, that's the idea. So yeah. Tell me a little about the uh, experience of using it. Is it, uh, first of all, is it um, software that I need to install or is it a service that exists in the cloud? Oh yeah, or something sure. Else? Sure. So there are different ways of running it. So I say right right now, um, and I don't mean to be marketing, so to speak, but yeah, I work for the company now, this company called DataStack, so a data, data management company, and they actually have a managed cloud uh, systems. It's called Astra DB. So the thing is, it's true. DataStax is started off doing Apache, supporting Apache Cassandra. So the NoSQL, SQL, wide data column type of database. So it supports a huge sets of data, big data thing. So, um, so uh, okay, the, your question was about... Uh, um, uh, oh, what, oh, what yeah. is it? A, is this a something that I need to install or install. is it a service that I connect to that somebody else is hosting or what? Oh, sure. So in that case, too, is that you, you can actually use a managed uh, database platform, first of all, right? If, if say, we want to have Pulsar, Pulsar is also built into the, what is called an Astra, Astra streaming uh, capability that's in the Astra cloud database as a platform. So you don't actually, in that case, need to install anything because you can just go to astra.com datastacks.com, you can get a free tier account, get a $25, you know, credit uh, for your account and play around with it. You can immediately kick, you know, kick up your cluster and then uh, start build your Cassandra database and, and, you know, create your tables and insert data, all of these things um, without you actually installing anything. And you can, there are also user interface, right? For example, then you want to experiment with the Pulsar, you can then create the streaming create the streaming and create what is called a tenant. And it's a multi-tenant system to the Pulsar, the way it works. Um, and the tenants, and then from there, then you can then quickly uh, set up your Pulsar streaming kind of, that's kind of working with your Apache Cassandra. So that would be like one way. Now, the other way too is that you can also run it locally. 
So locally, mm. they go through the normal process of getting the binary, installing it, and running on your local system. That means you normally will have to then you know, manage all of these things that are happening and you manage your topics, manage all of these things. You can do that. Or another easier way is to use Docker container. So you can mm. basically then call Docker and then run it. And we actually have, have that you know, in the hub too, so that, that you can actually kick off your Docker uh, desk on, on your Docker desktop, you can run that too. So, so these are like the different ways that you can run. So it, it is a managed service that's offered by Astra, just like their database is offered. Uh, yeah, is it also yes, offered as a managed service by other cloud providers like uh, Microsoft, Azure, or AWS? Oh, yeah. So I need to also, I didn't talk about that, is that when you kick off, right, when you set up your Astra database, you can actually have currently, uh, on the if you kind of sign up for a free tier, you can pick either Microsoft Azure or you can pick AWS or uh, Google Cloud Platform. I see. But there will be plans of also in, you know, increasing the number of cloud providers that we will be supporting too. So, yeah. Okay. Is there any code involved in order to oh, connect yeah. to uh, Pulsar? Pulsar. Okay, so if you kind of do a very fundamental, basic kind of flow, you actually don't even need to code too much. You should be able to then uh, set up your sync and set up, you know, your data data and how it flows. You know, you when define you your set database. Up, is that some configuration I do, or is that some code I write? Yeah, so it's set up, you can uh, configure it Yeah, using the uh, cloud. You know, when you log onto the cloud, the console, you can then go in there right. and um, set things up there, user interface that allow you to configure. Uh, now, however, if you want things that are fancier, then what Pulsar has is, is called like a serverless function. So it's Pulsar function that you can also define. Now with that, then you will need to do some coding because there are APIs, essentially APIs that allow you to connect to maybe external connectors and different hmm. capabilities and transforming and filtering all of your messages. You can actually use Pulsar function to do that. And with that, yes, you, you will need to do coding as well. And of yeah. course too, you can always write code too. Nobody stops you from that. But if you don't want to write code, yes, there are some basic functionality you can use the the cloud interface to do that. So, Got it. Yeah. Is there, if I, if I write uh, these uh, Pulsar serverless functions, uh, does it matter what language I write them in? Oh, okay. So the serverless, right now, we actually support a lot of different languages, but for sure, Java, JavaScript, and Ruby, and Python, and Go, uh, C++, and C Sharp as well. So those are definitely supported, and there are also community contribution that, for example, other JVM languages like Scala is also being supported too. So yeah, I, I also myself have to check the website to see what other languages are supported. But yeah, like I think the, all the major languages are pretty much there supported too. So they are client... You if you want to write client languages. So, yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Is it, uh, where would somebody go if they wanted to learn more about Pulsar? Oh. Oh, sure. You can now, there's also, uh, if you go to Apache, right, there's pulsar.apache.org. Uh, that's the I'm website. there right now. Yeah, sure, sure. And then I want to also invite everybody to join the hood, right? So, hood, okay, so that? we are trying, I call it the join the hood, but it's actually, we have a website that um, my team now is starting to work on and it's been published. It's called Pulsar Neighborhood. So mm -hmm. we're kind of wanting to form a community that's kind of without any uh, vendor intervention uh, like that. So so we call it a neighbor uh, neighborhood. So okay. it, the idea is a community. So then we don't want yet yeah, be tainted by any vendor marketing messages. <laughs> so yeah, and I need to look that up too. If you, then I found you, I just found a GitHub you found, page. Yeah, that's right. Called, it's uh, a, it says welcome to the Pulsar neighborhood, and there's somebody named Joanza Joseph. Yes, which that, is that's now right. my favorite new name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he's like our contributor to to the Pulsar community. That's right. Yeah, exactly. You found it. So yeah. Um, okay, and that's at uh, Pulsar Dash Neighborhood dot GitHub dot io. Dot o. Yeah, that's right. You got it. Yeah, exactly. I'll so you can do us. that. Yeah, there's also a meetup group too that our community manager has started uh, to run some meetups on it too. And right now everything's virtual, so so folks can join from anywhere in the world. Uh, oh, okay. But essentially, we have one in Amsterdam, I think, in the Central European time zone, and another one is North America time zone too. So there are meetup groups too. So I I need to uh, yeah I, I never remember to kind of do these things beforehand so I can give those links to you. Um, oh, I'm 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 looking up online it? right now. I see, well, I, see, I see one in New York City, one in Northern California, one in yes. the San Francisco Bay Area. I don't yeah. see the one in Amsterdam. Uh, oh, okay. I just I just searched for Apache Pulsar Meetup. 
Yeah, okay. that's I was one right. in Beijing. Um, I'm probably asleep when that one actually happens. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. So there's actually a uh, if you go to meetup.com slash pro and then slash Apache dash pulsar dash neighborhood and then there's like an umbrella of the na- pulsar neighborhood um, meetup pro group that has three groups in it. So so that's how yeah. That's how you can get to it too. Um, oh yeah, send yeah. me that link. I've, I was trying yeah. to type as you were saying, and I didn't get yeah. to. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah. I just send it to you. So. Oh, yeah. thanks a lot. Uh, I'll add that to the show notes. Show notes as well. Uh, is there anything that we haven't covered that uh, you think oh, we should? Yeah. Have? Uh, wow. Then yeah. If I if you let me talk about it, I can go for <laughs> hours. <laughs> no, I'm I just love your kidding. We won't. Mary. <laughs> Yeah, but I think um, in terms of as a starter, just knowing about what Pulsar is, I think I have already told you the, the, the key points. So, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, I've learned a lot talking to you, Mary, and I really appreciate thank you taking you, the David. time. Thank you, David. Really appreciate this, David. Really. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Okay. <laughs> In the world of technology, when things are changing so fast and there are so many exciting things out there that we can play around with, it's great to have friends so then you learn from one another, you bounce ideas off of one another, you form communities. Um, We never want to be fighting because there's no sense of fighting because things keep changing. So the best is to take advantage of the time of your friends, of your peers to learn and enjoy the ride.